TC Spiritual Shepherd, welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are getting into the placebo effect and we are getting into the correlation of how we convince ourselves to believe ourselves to then inherently create experiences and realities for ourselves based on our self-concept. Okay, so if that was a load of words for you and you guys do not understand generally what I've been speaking on about this, this is actually very important. So in your entire life, you either talk yourself in or talk yourself out of specific ways of experience, specific lifestyles, and specific things that you like to do in your life, okay? And so you're either going to talk yourself into it or talk yourself out of it. Now, one big thing that I'm going to be getting into is uh, this is like a, a, a lesson that I've taught. It's the grasshopper and the master. Now, the grasshopper goes to the master, okay? Obviously, the master's ultimately done this so many times and the grasshopper's like master master i want to be disciplined i want to be disciplined and and then the master goes what do you mean you already are you already are and the master goes huh and or, i'm sorry the the grasshopper goes huh and the master goes yeah you already are you're so disciplined that you use your discipline use your discipleship to become undisciplined or to be undisciplined that's where you that is where your focus lies your focus lies on disciplining your undisciplined and that's why you continuously see yourself as undisciplined but you are disciplined you're just disciplined in the wrong areas you're disciplined in the wrong perspectives you're disciplined in the wrong facets of life and so ultimately this is a grand lesson for a lot of things so say it's poverty and riches or abundance mindset Oh, you know, master, master, I want an abundance mindset. So uh, the grasshopper goes to the master and, and then me being the master goes, hey, I'm just letting you know, you know, you already are. You already are. You already are, which is the placebo. You already believe who you are. You already know who you are. And so you can obviously change the self-concept based in placebo, okay, based in placebo. There is evidence of this, scientific evidence, multitudes of evidence that is interconnected with this so if you tell yourself that you're pretty you're going to emit those frequencies that are resonant with you and what you would deem as that if you tell yourself that you are rich if you tell yourself that and you embody it you start to feel it you start to cultivate it you start to em emulate it imitate it emit it from your frequencies that is really how it is somebody will take the sugar pill and they'll eat the sugar pill and they'll say this sugar pill is this sugar pill is going to increase my testosterone this sugar pill is going to make me you know more prettier this this pill is going to make me thinner this pill is going to help da 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 da, da. they'll take it and they'll believe that by taking that pill they are ultimately going to transform that which is really just the red pill blue pill from the matrix where it's just like you have a belief system behind taking this pill and ultimately this is the placebo effect it's been studied multitudes of times and so ultimately they have proven that people with placebo have gotten benefits by believing there's been people who have and and it's psychology it's subconscious programming they've done this with people where they taken kids they've taken young teenagers and they say hey you're gonna take this we're gonna put you under an mri a fake mri okay they didn't actually turn it on they just made it seem like they turned it on okay they put them in there oh hey i'm just letting you know like everything's going to reverse um based on the based on the evidence that i see everything is going to reverse for you da -da 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 -da. and uh you're gonna continuously live a healthy life and like they convinced they convinced them they came back weeks later no symptoms no rashes no eczema no problematic skin conditions uh no problems with their organs because they were convinced but nothing fucking happened what so I want you guys to think about this. Like this is a very important thing because that means that you inherently create your own sickness. You inherently create your own health as well. You inherently create your own belief systems and your own concepts of who you think that you are and who you are. So it's about 
who you are being, what your beingness is. We are human beings. We are not human doing. So it's not always what you do. Yes, it is correlated that your being will take certain actions. And so, yes, there is a correlation to your beingness and doingness. But it's inherently what you are being beforehand. Who you are before the money. Who you are before the fit body. Who you are before the good relationship. Are you ready to receive these things or are you still needing to heal specific traumas that have to that are in conjunction with the lessons to learn so then you have and attract and be on the level to receive, okay, these specific things. And the people who have done the work, like myself and like other people, will continuously speak this to you guys. Some will get it, some will not, but as you continuously grow, you will start to realize that it is based in who you assume yourself to be. And the best assumption is a positive assumption of oneself and of others, okay? And of others. If you're if you're going to assume something of another person, assume the best. Assume the best. Okay, so some of these things that I'm going to get into is this right here. You are already disciplined. What what you must learn are the levels and spectrums of your focus. So you guys have seen like different spectrums, the Doppler effect and all these other different types of spectrums that, you know, different things. But I want you guys to understand that it's not just black and white. It's not just 50-50. It's not like this. There's spectrums. There's levels to it, okay? And so think in terms like of, uh, you know, if you're in that point of reference, is think in terms of like forex and think in terms of like the market okay nothing's inherently bad actually everything's inherently good you just need to have the knowledge to be able to do everything that would be inherently good okay you just have to make all the right choices okay so with this you are already disciplined you've been sleeping in for 45 days straight so it's not that you cannot wake up early okay it's that you're undisciplined to wake up early, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into sleeping sleeping, uh, you know, cycles and all this other stuff. That's a whole nother video. But I want you guys to understand that you are disciplined. You have trained yourself over and over and over to act the way that you are, okay? So what if you train yourself over and over to create who you like to be, who you like to be and what attracts based on your being. So if you're like, I wanna attract this lifestyle, I wanna be this way, I wanna have this lifestyle, I wanna cultivate this type of living, I want to have this type of thing, I wanna do this type of thing, fill in the blank. You must be on the same frequency resonance level to be able to be on the receiving factor of this. Okay, so that means that you create the habitual construction, you have the habits, you have the structure, you have the schedules, you have the organization of beings, okay? And as I've started to tap more into this, I've started to intuitively start to pick up on multimillionaires who, and it's not all about money, but what I'm saying is, is it, this is a great, because it, it chimes in with your lifestyles. Multi-millionaires are multi-millionaires on a multiple amount of levels. It's not just about money. But ultimately, I would tap in to be like, oh, this fits better with the schedule. Oh, this, this operates best this way. This cultivates best this way. Oh, this makes sense. Like if I do this, 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 and this, it just leads to this, 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 and this. And that really helps with my scheduling, really helps with my whatever. You guys get the point. Now, let's keep going. One thing too is self-improvement, self-acceptance, hypertrophy. We are constantly self-improving. The best thing to do is progressive overload for self-improvement. Self-overload or uh, progressive overload for self-acceptance. See, if you have gotten into the self-improvement, the self-development, you're inherently always saying that I have to keep developing, I have to keep developing, I have to keep developing myself. What is that saying about you? Are you seeing the implication, the assumption of it? I have to keep doing, I have to keep developing myself. That is inherently saying you're not developed. So if you're not developed, 
then you're going to inherently still need to self-perpetuate that same concept cycle, the same conceptual cycle, perpetual cycle that is playing over and over. So self-acceptance, okay? Self-acceptance is how you fill that void. Self-acceptance is getting to the point that, oh, I'm already good enough. I'm already good enough. I'm already good enough. I'm already beautiful. I'm already who I am now. I'm, I'm, I am that person now. I'm already that person now. I'm already somebody now. I'm already good now. I don't need to do all of these things to feel like I'm good now. That's the problem is we generally think like, oh, we're not good now. It's where your focus is. So one big thing, guys, is you are disciplined. What are the levels and spectrums of your focus? So you're on different levels. And so you might be, like I just said, you might be disciplined for sleeping in. That doesn't mean that you're not disciplined, which is a good positive level, but you don't want the inherent habitual construction of sleeping in. You want to wake up early. So it's taking the same discipline that you would generally do. It's just like the power of habit. It's just like atomic habits. James Clear, it's just like the power of habit. All these types of things that you have to change the reward or you change the routine or you change the ritual that rewards you this specific way. You are already disciplined or you are already fit, okay? You're already fit, especially if you're if you do things consistently or you're already consistent. Now maybe it's be more consistent, okay? Or you already are scheduled, like you have a schedule. You just might need to have the right schedule. You might have a schedule but you might have the complete wrong schedule, okay? You might be a hard worker, but you might not be a smart worker, but that doesn't mean that you're not a worker and doesn't mean that you don't work hard, but you might be able to use that hard work for a year to inherently become a smart worker that work could start working for you. Money could start making money for you and you can enjoy your life which is inherently what we're supposed to do. We are here for self-actualization, self-transcendence. We are here for the highest peak of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You guys get the point. We are here not to be human doings, human robots. We're not made to walk around being on our phones all day. The only time that, like, one big thing that I'm cultivating with being an online entrepreneur, with being, you know, somebody who's a content creator or somebody who's, creating art or you know building creativity creativity okay as i'm starting to create more art for people and cultivate people one big thing that i'm realizing is is that as i shrink my screen time and i just provide more value so i could be on my phone for 15 minutes for this and then you multiply that by seven days that's how much i'm on my phone creating videos Okay, so then say you're placing a couple of different things, you know, you're, you're placing trades or you're, uh, you know, doing things for your business, you're recording videos, you're, you're making money, whatever. If you add that up, I, my greatest thing is, is about four hours a week. If you're on your phone four hours a week, that's actually really good. Specifically, if you're an online entrepreneur, why? Why? The four hour work week. The four hour work week, the four hour work day, if you really want to get into those correlations too. Some people don't read it as the four hour work week, which you can. It depends on the levels and the spectrums of which you're at. If you have more online content, you could send you can work less because you could just send people to the link. But if you have to create more content, then you still are in the production. You are still in the growth phase. There's people who are past the growth phase. They're in the expansion phase. They're in the winning phase. They're in the, the fruitful. The, they, they have created the produce, their fruits, the spiritual fruits. They've created the fruits of the spirit. They've produced it over and over and over. The fruits of the spirit, the self-control. They've cultivated all these different things, okay? And they've put it and they've mastered it. They've cultivated themselves and then they've publicized it. They've helped other people create it, go through their own mentorship, evolution, evolutionize themselves, evolve themselves, 
And one big thing with this is that now they can kind of sit back and enjoy the fruits of their labor. That's the whole point of that, that reference. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Well, you first had to produce produce. You had to fir- you first had to produce produce of, re- of your spirits of the fruit or the fruits of the spirit. You had to literally cultivate that. Okay. And so you are already disciplined. Now the, the grasshopper and the master as this intercorrelation, this will be kind of the, the conclusion, but a lot of us, we have to reframe our brains. We have to restructure our brains. We have to start to look at like, and, and the thing is, is are you so quick you're, are you so quick to belittle yourself, but you're not quick enough to talk yourself up because you're a fully balanced being, okay? And so you have to focus on the right spectrums. So you literally might be so organized with your unorganization. You might be so empowered with disempowerment. Like you might be so powerful at talking yourself down. And see, that's that's where the first recognition of the unconscious, being conscious of the unconscious is. And I really like to inspire people to, to see the aspect that it's not just being one thing. It's not just cultivating one lifestyle. It's not just acting. It's cultivating the best lifestyle for you. For you. If it's best for the all and, it, it, and you thrive in your lifestyle for you, that is the best. That is the best version. Okay. And I, I think that there's a whole misconception, is, you know, especially and specifically nowadays, is, is because we generally will misconstrue somebody's success for, you know, it, it took them this or they had to do these types of things to get there. And I think that there's this balance. There's this inherent balance that a lot of people who are actually successful nowadays, we are the chosen ones. We are the, the ones that really help people. Like we are the ones that like inherently put ourselves out there for people. So then we could show them, Hey, do it this, do it this way. Do these things this way. This will help correlate and build your life. This is how you literally can escape the matrix. This is how you can leave this realm. This is how you can transform out of even debt slavery or, or, or debt wage in indentured servitude. Uh, this is how you can X, Y, Z. If you guys have any questions on any of those types of things, just reach out to me. But one big thing, guys, before we conclude is, is be be the being that you really wish to be. You are, you attract what you are. And so when you start to change who you are to be who you really are being, that is where you start to experience that. And you might have to listen to that a few times because you've either been told, a lot of us have been told outside or we care too much about the world, what the world thinks when the world really doesn't exist. The world really is a blank fucking slate where you have to come from the, the initiation point. You have to initiate your life. People are going to tell you, hey, I want this to happen for you. I want this to be your life. But that's just their projection and their idea of what they want your life to be. You inherently have to live it. You inherently have to be the goodness in the world. You have to truly be the gentleness, the kindness. You have to be the fruitfulness of the world. You have to be the fruits of the spirit of the world. You have to create proper produce or production of produce in your life and who you are is what you produce. Who you are is what you produce. So you can recognize people by their fruits. Okay. And so in this is changing your fruits, letting your old fruits die off and fertilize new fruits. That's a big thing. So letting your old, instead of attaching and it's what you focus on, instead of you're attaching yourself to an old self, it's out with the old, in with the new, and then focus on the new. Okay, so even when there's old stuff that's popping up, oh, hey, you know, come do this with me. Uh, uh, let's do this. Let's act like this. Let's do this. Da, 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 da. As you cultivate in this and you focus on this realm, okay, on the new, that is how you're going to intercorrelate and transform and build positively. Stay focused on, you know, the gold aspects of your life rather than the spectrumized or lower spectrum of or the lower levels that you've been around your entire life, the trauma, the poison, the poison, food, drink, substance. But if you are so quick to be so disciplined with poisonous substance, imagine, imagine how powerful you must be 
that you are so magical and so miraculous that you have performed a miracle of magic that told yourself that you're not magical, that you've told yourself that you're not important. Imagine being such a VIP that you are so fucking VIP that you told yourself that you're not important. And then because you are such a great VIP, you believed yourself because you care about what bigger people or, or uh, external things You've externalized yourself. You have projections of yourself hovering three feet around your auric field. It's who you truly embody yourself. You have to be vulnerable. We have to be vulnerable. We have to be loving. We have to be caring. Okay, And we have to truly offer something to the world. We are, we are generous offerings to the world. Okay, so what are you generating? What are you generating generously? Are you generating poverty generously? Are you generating degeneracy generously? Gosh, that, that, would, that should be a rhyme. That should be a rhyme. Are you generating degeneracy generously? Are you doing that? Did you hear me yet? Are you generating proper gene synthesis? Are you generating proper, you know, proper genome therapy, proper genome, you know, uh, emission of your ones and zeros, meaning are you going to the gym? Are you studying? Are you improving yourself? So then when you pass your genes on to your kids and your DNA that they have all the right ones on and they have all the zeros that they don't need off. Okay. So the right things are on and the wrong things are off. So that's actually perfect. They're inherently going to be created with less trauma. Okay. It's your duty. Now it's your duty. I don't care how old you are. If you have kids or say you haven't had kids yet, that it's your duty to be the best version of you now to heal these types of emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of yourself. And yes, we have spiritual assets. I know I have spiritual assets. Okay. I don't have to, I don't have to ask you for that. I don't have to ask, Oh wait, do I have spiritual assets? I know I have spiritual assets. I know I have emotional assets. I know I have mental assets assets and aspects in my life that are cultivating for the best version of me and 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 the all okay and so it's it's inherent that we use these energies and we heal these energies now and then when we have kids we can actually be present with our kids we can actually care for our kids we can actually love our kids we can actually teach our kids instead and we can teach our kids how to learn not what to learn we always teach them what to learn but we don't ever teach them how to learn we don't teach them the advancements of oh this is how you learn okay you have to be spiritually discerning you have to be decisive you have to devise which plan is best for safety for actualization for realization for positive empathy or are we just going to say study this because this is what i've studied and you need to study this because this is what we've studied our entire lives. It's like that might still be right, but you should teach them how to study so then they can find out the things of what you've studied and they can learn the ins and outs of how to study it. Okay? Because obviously there's levels and there's levels to the litness. Peace, much love, namaste. Talk to you guys soon. This is you know, getting into just many different correlations of you are already disciplined and you need to start to fill the blank in. You are already positive. You might be so positive that you positively tell yourself that you're negative and then you believe that you're negative because you're so positively positive about how negative you might be acting. You need to like really like it's not that difficult. It's like you convince yourself via the the placebo effect consistently. You literally convince yourself who you are or who you're not. So it's apparent it's apparent and imperative that you consistently really do convince yourself who you are and that is who you really actually are. Peace, much love, namaste. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.